Also, what's interesting about that poem is not only do we have access to that voice of grief and loss, a very a voice that can be very personal and subjective, but also the the poet stands back a little and talks at various points about the nature of the human condition, and and tells us, for example, that if as humans we experience fear and desire and grief and joy, it's because we we are um, containing within us this brilliant seed of heavenly energy, but it's trapped in the dark prison house of the flesh. And so you have this combination of, of the joy and the grief and the, and the fear and the desire that humans experience. And I think that's a very rich way of understanding the human condition that has often appealed to those who have heard that voice in, in Virgil. And it was particularly interesting for me to uh, write about Sappho, the one one female author who who, who does it. make it into the twelve. Um, you know, not our fault. It's a fault of uh, the voices that survive from antiquity. Uh, but they're um, a, 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 a genuine female voice, uh, not not written by males for uh, not not words put by male authors into female mouths. Um, it's uh, it was particularly delightful actually to write about Sappho. I really enjoyed doing that and it was uh, a great thrill. Uh, just a couple of days before the, the book went to oh, press yes, uh, we discovered, we heard that a new poem of Sappho had been discovered and had just been published. So very hot from the press <laughs> in the last two days. Um, I found myself translating that poem and writing two more pages. And you know that excitement of knowing that uh, it is indeed a, a voice from antiquity in I was the first years to hear it for well, at least a thousand and a half years and perhaps more. I mean, that's, that was something new for me and uh, I hope some of the excitement may even come over.